second run. It's still fucking got some on me though. Welcome back everyone, welcome to another episode. Uh, this morning, I'm out with a man, a legend, in fact, <laughs> of the snapper fishing world, Brad Bye. If there's ever a bloke whose name is synonymous with good snapper fishing, it's this bloke right here. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to try something a little bit different. We went out yesterday and we threw some plastics around. We won't talk about that. But, <laughs> we're gonna do some float lining, so, uh, hopefully Brad will share a few of his tips about how to float line for, for snapper. Basically, it involves a ton load of, of early going over the side. We got here pretty early, found our mark, but fart around a little bit because positioning is pretty important when you're doing this kind of fishing. We're just going to get a burly trail going. Lots of burly, you reckon, or just constant? No, oh, just a constant dribble, mate. What are you doing, just fish bits? I've just got heaps of uh, mac tuna there. Yep. Plenty of oil in the water. Yep. Spend a bit of time, bloody, making sure that we get a good burly trail going and then we'll knock that off for a little bit. Yep. Usually going to take around about, I don't know, depends how lucky you are, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, average, average sort of half an hour to an hour right until up. you'll get a bit of fish on. Yep. Early in the morning like this could happen straight away. But you're, yeah. You've got to suck at the sea, I guess. Alright, so watch. Brad does that. I'm going to rig up and we're stuck in it. We're going to use sort of flesh baits today, some bonito. Cuddlefish. Cuddlefish. Uh, it's nice. Always keep these nice little small yakers, mate. Yellow tail there. Any yeah. kind of flesh base work, all right. What's your What's your secret? What's your gun? Bait? What's your favourite? If you really want a real big red, yeah, and it's not going to always happen, but listen, listen to this you've one. You've got to throw out a dead yakker. Dead yakker. Don't cut it up. Don't butterfly. Nah, no. just leave it the way it is. Yeah. Right. Nice little ballie on the nose. Leave it out, put it in the rod holder. There you go, people pay millions for that information. Yeah. All right, we're rig up. <laughs> and if your life depended on it, if someone said yeah, your life depends on uh, your preference to plastic fish or bait fish, what would it be? <laughs> no question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just plastic and mate. Yeah. Like if you want your trophy fish, that's where it's at. What's it? You always gotta have a little array of bait, you know, like we usually find sometimes, oh mate, I just got one on a pilly. You try and put another pilly out now. Won't touch it, yeah. Yeah, you know, a bit of bonito. Oh, I'm getting a couple on bonito and then I'll you know swap just again because Turn off it, good. yeah. They can be a frustrating fish, eh, sometimes. Very. And so now that you get what like you got this, the burly stream established, you're just throwing over little bits of chunks just yep. every now and then just keep yeah, a just constant a, trail going out. Yeah. Little little stream of stuff keep them interested, especially this time of the morning. Once that sun touches the water, she'll probably turn off a bit, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a twilight activity, isn't it? Yeah. Mornings, afternoons, kind of thing. Oh, we used to come down early hours of the morning sometimes. Yeah. Ridiculous hours. <laughs> that shows the effectiveness of flatlining. Brad just put out his first bait, very first bait, literally two minutes. <laughs> and we're straight on. Good fish, mate, you reckon? Oh, he's average, yeah. He's probably just a little panty. Didn't take very long at all. Um, there's got no current here, mate. I'm just, I've got no uh, sinker on at all. Yeah, just... He's just a little fella, but he might go into the corner, Rod. Better than our day yesterday, so that's for sure. All right, we're equal to yesterday's. <laughs> yeah, we're equal to yesterday's count. Not a bad fish, perfect eating size. It's really yeah, he's just a nice little... Perfect eating size. Little penny, mate. Thanks, mate.
Yeah, you ratchet on then. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, you always want them to run with that. As soon as they pick up that little bit of bait, yeah. any resistance to that hook before they swallow it, they're just going to spit it. Yeah. And then that's, that bait's tainted then. I reckon they just they swim away it. from it and yeah. think, oh, no, that's not falling the same as the other one, or it moved. Yeah. Um, especially the big fellas. They're not stupid, you know. I was about to say, because we think fish are stupid, but they're not nah. actually. I mean, they become kind of streetwise after a while, don't they? See, I just think bloody hard then. Alright, so. So it's over. Okay. <laughs> it's tainted. Tainted bait. <laughs> and when you're feeding out, you're just always having a bit of always loop. Just bit, keep that line bit of going belly on it. So you're not, yeah, you don't. But you're not, you're not releasing it under tension, are you? No, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to feel a bite. Yep. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, no. yep. Oh. Fuck it. Oh, I'm getting on his back. There we go. <laughs> don't think he's a big fish. <laughs> Straight on it though, aren't they? Back here all around again. So this is a whole fresh yellow tail, single hook rig. Still only got a 5-0. 5-0 suicide shape hook, yeah. Turn it around the back the other way. Yeah. And you only just really want it hanging out the skin like this. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. So that point's exposed, yeah. Let's see what he does. There's some stuff. Some... <laughs> <laughs> if I was going to steal anything off Brad's boat, it would be this fucking bag here, because look at this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Organised. <laughs> and uh, and we were, what? Organised chaos. <laughs> Yeah, I should be, you, you, my viewers should be paying for this because here, I'm going to go through his colours, this is it. And I'm telling you, there it is, I knew it would be there. If Gavin Hackett's watching this, that is the Brad Boy, we call that. White seven inch gold jerk shed. No matter what size they are, I like to brain spike them. Oh yeah? So the brain spike's going to be... Basically on the the bone above the eye. Yeah. Just here, there's a little soft spot little there. Soft, you can feel that. There, yeah, right. You're coming there and down towards the eye a bit. See how his yeah. fins just come out like this? Yeah, that's what it is. And that puts him to sleep straight away. Yeah. And stops all that blood going into your fillets later on. So similar to the bleeding tuna kind of thing. Yeah, the and then effect. I just take the, the neck out of him. Yeah. Um, same with this fella, and you'll see when we when we fill it these, mate. Much better the quality of the meat is. Yeah, right. Same again. You know, you've hit the sweet spot yeah, when them fins come out. Yep. Most humane way to do it for the poor buggers. <laughs> well, yeah, it's humane, but it's also the best way to preserve the flesh, I reckon, for cooking 100%. it. Right. And if you are, I'll put the link up to Brad's Instagram page. Not the nude one, uh, <laughs> his fishing one. <laughs> uh, and you'll see the type of snapper this bloke catches. Uh, you just fillet these like nice normal Yeah, mate, just yeah. take the fillet and I, I'll use, I'll use these sort of. Do I, I might get you to demo what you hear. So this is a bonito that we're using here. I know you mentioned yesterday that this is one of your favourite baits as well. Yeah, I do love yeah. a bit of bonito, mate. And... Oh, I just sort of come along if I was doing yeah, right. strip baits, mate, like yeah. this. You know, you don't want big square chunks. They just they just twist your line. Yep. Everything needs to be streamlined. When it's sinking, it's kind of swell and it's going down. Yeah, if you've got a big chunk on, like if any kind of current runner, mate. Yeah. Especially when I'm putting on a piece of bait, like I like to expose me hook a fair bit. It's going to make a joke about you and exposing things, but <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> and just keep it like this, you know, don't boil that bloody... Yeah. Don't try and keep putting meat over the hook. Yeah, right. Just put it through. Um, so having know. a bit of hook showing doesn't seem yeah. to phase them. No, that, that's what you want there, just that just little bit yeah. coming out yeah. like that. And... <laughs> no, 
to show you a quick butterfly yeah. rig that I like to use and people can use this as much as they like. I would normally, on a, a bigger bait like this, I'd probably go with a bit bigger hook than a 5.0. Yep. I'd run a 6.0 with this, yep. uh, or even an 8.0, depending on the size of your bait. You take your fillets out both yep. sides, you twist your backbone out, yep. throw him over. Especially in current, this works a treat. So if you've got a, a big sinker Pat Noster rig on, yep. or even just float lining, yep. down through the nose, everything's got to be symmetrical, straight yep. down. Through, through middle, both, pull it right through. Both jaws, yeah. I like to in. come down to the chest, yep. uh, to the breastplate, and leave him like this. Oh, yeah, perfect. They're going to sit nice and square. Yeah. yeah. When you get him in the current like that, and you've got a bit of weight on a Pat Noster, yep. these two little lovely biscuits at the back just start. Flap around a bit. Yeah. yeah. Enticing. Can't tell you how many really good fish we've got off them, like from Sambos to. Everything else here? Oh. There we go. It's got a hit on this one too. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, guys, is we've been playing line for a while. We've got a couple of little fish there, a couple of rounds of but you'll see the sun's coming up a bit. Uh, light levels are getting a bit too high. The bite's not starting to wane off a bit. Because there, so we're going to go a bit wider and chuck some plastics around. You always seem to have the big fish just sitting right at the step. Right on the step of it, yeah, right, right where it starts. Right at the steps. That's why you've got to sort of start with that. But you were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Is, is it because you think there's bait just usually holding up? Because that's where the current upwelling is going. So yeah. if the bait's holding up there, the big yeah. snapper's sitting under them, and then you yeah. see like picking them off. Yeah, okay. he'll come up, grab them, and piss back off down yeah. the bottom. Hopefully, grab it, my buddy. So what Brad's talking about here is, and you mentioned, it, you mentioned it yesterday, the straight plastic. When you're rigging your plastic, it's critical that you get them straight along the shaft of the hook. You can usually and tell when you're winding in. You'll see this here, you're going to wind this one in. You can see that swimming perfectly level and that tail's wagging. It's actually looking like a little fish swimming. You can even just do a little test there at times, see yep. how it's looking. So you get no spin or anything you like that. You don't want that plastic dropping from the surface just down. Just spiraling the down, yeah. Spiraling. Double natural, yeah. Or going side. Now answer me a question. Oh, he's a little trevally or something, isn't that? No, he's a little, a little snapper. Bloody hell. Things are tight. The guys, we're coming out a little bit wider. We're trying to have plastics around. We found some snapper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> we haven't found a big one yet. Oh, I just had a hit on that too. Yeah, there we go. A bit of um, baby in that, so I'll close the beer. Slightly better one. Touch better, eh? That's a touch better. That's a better. That's a better fish. He's nice. That's nice. A bit better fish, Rob. Yeah, that's what we came for, man. Finally. No, that's all right. Go. Nice. Thanks, mate. Pretty good. Go on. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. They're slowly getting better. Uh, yeah, Brad made a call to pack up the plate line and come a bit wider so it turned out to be a good call. It's a slightly better fish there. I'm just using plastics out here, just drifting. Yeah. Alright guys, we've just relocated again and Brad has hooked a good one. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> yeah, just in case I've done a little bit of damage around the lips yep. when you first hit them. Yep. I always like to just back off mid water. On once you got, once you got them up off the bottom, yeah, you're kind just of safe there. Yeah. turn. Yep. If you've done that damage around the lip, you pull that plastic out right pull, at the pull bottom. That, yeah. This is a good fish, yeah? Yeah, I think so. He's probably, well, he might be a five kilo fish, maybe. Might not even be because I'm a pretty light line here, so. There you go, we've got colour in there. Right, yeah, he's only he's nice. four. Oh, 
Oh, sweet. Woo! <laughs> it's been a battle. <laughs> it's been a two day battle, that one. <laughs> that has been a two day battle. But the old Brad Boy does it again. Look. The Brad Boy did that. Yeah. Pearl White Z man. Hold it up. There you go. Oh, but uh, this is why, you all joke aside, blokes like Brad are renowned for catching good fish. Persistence, yeah? Kind of understanding where they're going to be. We know they're not biting today, but yep. you just got to keep moving and keep on the move, guys. Nice fish, mate. Well done. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, that's not a bad fish, too. Yeah. Near that bottom, mate. All right, mate. He'll be <laughs> That's it, perfect. Perfect. Nice. Thanks, mate. Legend. You notice me old Matt's had a <laughs> bit of a pounding over the years. <laughs> you get a few um, zip ties in her every now and then to <laughs> <laughs> make up the holes. <laughs> so guys, what's that? That's our second better fish. Yep. There we go. As Brad was saying, it's a combination of obviously you've got to know your fish and know what you're chasing and how to actually catch them, but also persistence, a fundamental element. Uh, we really sort of had a struggle yesterday. Uh, today we're sort of finding fish a little bit more consistently. We found a bait ball and we've sort of been working around the edges of that and drifting over it. And there you go. We just lost the. Was that's two fish in that drift, mate? Yeah, yeah, uh, two fish on that drift. I dropped one. We lost, yeah, <laughs> we dropped one. And, Nice one. Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, got all this on film. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> exactly what we're talking about. You got your plastic back, mate. That, that was all right. Fish telling on it. It was a decent fish. Cameras on too, mate. Did you I got see that, that bail arm. I got that. I got that. This camera's on. That's a good fish, too, yeah? He's in that fucking kelp. Oh, that's a good fish. Get him out of your can, mate. You want too much pressure on him. He's only going to react. Oh, no. Like that? Yep. Get out of there. You've got no business. So this guy might be a really good fish. Don't. <laughs> this might be the one we came for. <laughs> Get him out. Remember I just said you had a little shy off there? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I put the camera on. So Brad just uh, sort of mentioned he had what's called a shy off where the fish will just sort of come and brush against the plastic really, not even try and hit it or anything like that. I thought he was telling fucking stories, but <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> and this is a, uh, this is a good fish.
That's his second run. He's still fucking got some on me though. <laughs> He's going on here. Oh, Bradley. Oh, these fish today, I tell you, fucking what. I'm just going to stay quiet for now. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs>